You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. So I've been getting really big into horror, uh, horror again. Um, I just uh, I know this is a bit of a self plug. Um, I wrote a creepy pasta called What Stares Back. And it actually got turned into a creepypasta that a very talented YouTuber narrated. So I'm going to uh, link that in this video. If you guys like listen to that, please be sure to check it out. I'm sure you'll get a. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, I, I enjoy writing Lovecraftian style horror. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into Echo. And uh, oh lord, I uh, I don't want anyone to die. I don't want anyone to die. I am so freaked out. Please let these people live. Lord, let these people live. Anyway, let's do it. I'm getting just a little annoyed that everyone is acting like I'm a little kid that needs to be watched. Cool. Be right back. Kudzu does a little jog away before disappearing around the corner. I lean back against the door of the car, swinging the keys around a finger. It's completely quiet now, and I haven't heard a single gunshot since we got outside. Well, I guess that's an improvement. I wonder if everyone that's been fighting is dead now. Or maybe they just realized how ridiculous the mayor's story was and left. Thinking about the supposed monster that I definitely don't believe in, though, has me looking over my shoulder into the darkness. Images of a hanging body cross my mind. Shit. I look over to where Kudzu went. It's been a little while. Shouldn't he be done by now? Shit. A pop from the brush across the street makes me jump. Leo? My voice comes out in a whisper. Okay. Let's, uh, let's read it. Leo? There's definitely something there. Its form stands out just a shade darker than the trees behind it. It might be a bush, but it looks thin, like a person. I squint at it, and that's when I see the glint of two eyes in the darkness. I freeze. Whoever it is, they're not responding to me, and that's definitely not a good sign. I decide that I'm just not going to move until Kudzu gets here. Fuck that! I would jump on that fucking car and get on the roof! Yeah, and if it does move, I'll just run over to where Kudzu went. I don't think he'll mind me catching him with his pants down if there's a fucking psychopath chasing after us. I see a thick tail switch out, swish out to the side of the dark thing. Slowly, I feel behind myself for the keyhole to the car door, sliding the key and unlocking it. Actually, I'll just get in the car and... Footsteps to my right. Duke, his eyes wild, is on me in an instant. Ow! He slams into me so hard I'm sent to the asphalt with an impact that rattles my brain. I roll over groggily and see Duke bent over, his hands fumbling to the ground. Somehow, he's moved his handcuffed hands from behind himself to the front. I realize that I don't have my keys anymore at the same time that Duke stands up, keys in hand. Kudzu! I yell and reach for Duke, who dodges away, throwing some kicks at me before yanking open my car door. Fuck! I lunge for the handle, but I see the weasel slam down the lock just as I reached it. Kudzu comes running around the corner just as Duke starts up the car. Duke! I shout uselessly at Kudzu as Duke peels out, yanking the handle from my grasp and forcing me to hop back a step to stop from being run over. Of course, I think that Duke's just going to take off down the road and get the hell out of Echo. I have no idea that he's going to turn sharply in the parking lot and come straight for me. Chase! Kudzu screams at me, just 20 feet away now. But there's no time. The car is coming at me. I jump to the left, but Duke easily follows my movement. I see the license plate in the headlights, which Duke hasn't turned on. I jump and land on the hood of the car as it hits me. Oh! I feel like my body is falling through the air. I see the stars and the moon, then land. The desert stretches and, wi and winds into the distance, rising and falling with the mountains, hills, and valleys. It's endless, monolithic, passionless. Except here. Its mark is clear on the land, like a stain, a blemish in the beige patchwork of the wilderness. The earth's bad, the air's bad, everything's tainted. 
painted. The mark is old. It's ancient. Been here longer than people. All people. And they knew it, too. Everyone who's been here knows it. So do you, even though you're not from here. You were drawn to the stain like all the other evil that planted itself here. You can see it right through the otter's eyes. You see its influence stretch above you like black tendrils into a dark red sky. They stretch, search, reach for anything alive, to stain anything they touch. So it is. So it always will be. Chase! I stare groggily up at the face above me. A swirling mess of gray and black before I'm able to focus on the nose just inches away from my own. That crosses my eyes, which hurt, which hurts so I close them again. Chase! The voice is gentler this time, though no less concerned. I try to reach my hand up to assure whoever it is that I'm fine. I feel the soft, velvety sensation of an ear catch between my fingers and the person above me stills. What happened? Are, are, you, are you guys okay? I mumble thickly past lips that don't seem to cooperate with words that don't seem to make sense. Are you? He hit you really hard! I feel a hand over the top of my head, like it's looking for something. Did you hit your head? I feel my own head, keeping my other hand resting on Kudzu's head. That's right, Kudzu. I push myself up suddenly, realizing where I am and what just happened. I look around into the night, the surreal feeling of regaining consciousness in this nightmare making it all the more horrific. Shit, where is he? I try to push myself up, but Kudzu holds me down firmly. Duke, he took off somewhere. Kudzu looks around, his ears pointed up as if listening before looking back down at me as I try to sit up again. You need to stay down for now. Something might be injured. I think I'm okay, just a little bit out of it. Kudzu gazes down at me, and for a moment I'm left staring into his deep, dark eyes. That's when the sound of feet slapping against asphalt breaks the spell, and Kudzu looks behind himself. What the hell? Duke just... Ah! Kudzu is suddenly shoved roughly away, and I find myself held up in Leo's arms. Holy shit, Leo, calm down. What the fuck happened? Leo desperately looks me up and down as he holds me in his arms. Did he shoot you? What? No, he just he hit me with a car. I see Leo's eyes widen and his ears shoot back up. And his ears shoot up. He suddenly turns his attention to Kudzu. On Kudzu, hackles raised. What the fuck were you doing, Cud? Why weren't you watching him? Kudzu flinches back, then glares. He came out of nowhere, Leo. We were both trying to stop him. I can see Leo working himself up to shout something else, but that's when I push myself out of his strong grip. Despite the circumstances, I'm bristling at the way I'm being coddled. Leo! He was driving a fucking car! There wasn't anything he could do! Now standing, I feel an achy sensation in my back, and my head spins a little. I brace my hands on my knees and wait for it to subside. I don't think you should be standing up so soon. I'm fine. Though now that I'm standing, I'm not completely sure of that. Worrying twinges and creaks pang throughout my body, but I force myself to straighten up, facing the other two. He's probably got a couple uh, fractures. We need to keep moving. Find the others and get out of here. Leo moves up next to me, a big paw reaching out to wrap around my shoulder. I cringe, though, and Leo takes his hand back. You need me to carry you, honey? I grimace and shake my head, mostly because I feel like being slung over his back would be even worse. He settles on rubbing my back gently, eyes still looking me over, as if trying to spot some unseen injury. Let's get the hell out of Peyton. I mean, let's get the hell to Peyton. Kudzu coughs awkwardly. We've lost the car, though. Oh, yeah. My heart sinks. Even now, in the situation we're in, I'm a little angry that it was my car that was stolen. I worked hard to buy that thing, even if it was a junker. Leo shakes his head like it's a mild annoyance. And we'll just have to use my van instead. Leo looks up the road in the direction of the diner where he left it two days ago. Wait, let's let's at least check the motel to see if any of the others are in our room. Otter, I'm sure the others have already gotten out by now. I mean, we haven't heard anything from any of them, though. And wouldn't they have, like, brought the police or something? Leo looks back at the motel, chewing his lip. All right, but let's be fucking quick about it. We need to get the hell out of here so we can get everyone help. Yeah, real quick. 
I reach into my back pocket, pulling out the key card as I hobble in the direction of our room on the other side of the building. Kudzu reaches out to me. You need... You need... He Leo shoulders the raccoon aside as he practically jumps to my side, gently pressing a hand into my back again. Jesus, Leo. Stay close, Otter. Not gonna let something like that happen to you again. I try to ignore the tension I feel building between the other two. More than anything, I'm annoyed at Leo. Why is he acting like this? Sure, he was always a little jealous, but right now, in the middle of his hellscape of chaos... I shake my head, allowing the wolf to guide me with his hand as we turn the corner to the motel. Kudzu stays close behind us, and I look back at him and give him a small smile to show that I at least appreciate his concern for me. He gives me a short nod back, but otherwise doesn't say anything. Like most of the town, the back of the motel is completely deserted as far as I can see. Another pop that's probably a gunshot echoes in the distance, but I'm just thankful they aren't happening every minute like earlier. Again, I wonder if it's because everyone's dead. As fucked up as it is, I think that might be a good thing for us. As long as it doesn't involve any of my friends. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure at least some of them are dead. We reach the door of the motel and my heart sinks again as I see there's no light coming from the window. Shakily, I raise the keycard to press it against the lock, only to accidentally drop it. I start to bend over to pick it up, but Leo puts a hand on my shoulder, speaking gently into my ear. Don't move, Otter. He sweeps up the card and presses it to the lock. It flashes green, and I hear the electric buzz of the lock coming unlatched before Leo presses down on the door handle, then pauses. His other hand suddenly reaches out behind me toward Kudzu. Kudzu, hand me my gun. I'll give you dukes. Kudzu stares at the hand for a moment, then jumps, as if suddenly realizing what the wolf is talking about. Oh! Right. Kudzu lifts his shirt, fumbling with the waistband before pulling out the gun. He hands it to Leo, who in turn hands him Duke's gun. He checks the safety on his own before pointing it towards the door. Leo pauses again, then glances at me. Otter, behind me. Leo nods back to the wall next to the door. I only feel a little twinge of resentment at being treated like a child again, but I'm too eager to check the room to say anything. Finally, Leo gives the door a gentle shove, allowing it to swing open on its own. I can't see anything from behind Leo, but judging by the look Kudzu on Kudzu's face next to me, they don't see anything. I realize why as Leo slowly reaches inside and flips the light switch. No. Oh. I can't resist and peek around Leo's bulk into the motel room. I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe a blood splattered room with all of our friends' bodies piled up in the middle or something? Instead, though, it's basically just how I remember it. I even see my pajamas crumpled up on my side of the bed where I left them. Leo holds steady for a moment, keeping the gun pointed at the ceiling of the room. Finally, he leans in, whispering loudly. I said he whispered loudly, not yawned loudly. <laughs> Hello? There's no response. Leo waits just a while longer before finally moving forward slowly. I don't wait for Leo's approval to follow and move closely behind him, Kudzu just behind me. There isn't much to search in the motel room, having just the room and the bathroom to check. Once Leo is sure it's clear, I shut the door and lock it and lock it before turning to the other two. Just so we know that we're safe, for now at least. Leo shakes his head. We gotta keep moving, Chase. We should head back to my place now. I open Jenna's laptop on the table, pushing the power button. Come on, what are you doing? Leo shifts his weight from one foot to the other. Kudzu moves to stand next to me. Checking the internet? I was hoping to. I sigh as I stare at the password screen. Well, let me check with my phone. Leo sighs again. That's not going to help us. I have Wi-Fi calling. Leo sighs again and sits, and sits heavily on the bed, bending it, in like, bending it in like a bow. He sets his gun on the bedside table before rubbing his face vigorously with both hands. You okay? Saying that Leo's been on edge is an understatement. And sure, we're all fucked up right now, but the way the wolf's been acting, it's like he's a different person. Leo lets his hand slide down his face so he can peer at me over his fingertips. He examines me for a while, and finally reaches out with both hands. Come here, Chula. I almost hesitate, and I'm not sure why. I walk over to him and stand in front of the wolf before he reaches out and pulls me down into his lap. Then he presses my head against his chest before wrapping his arms around me. He starts, ch he starts stroking the back of my neck gently, and it makes me shiver. 
It all feels a little forced. We don't meld together naturally like we always used to. I'm sorry about letting all of this happen. I should have told the police when Duke started threatening earlier. Do you know what's happening? Leo takes in another breath and his broad chest swells again against my cheek before he blows it out, ruffling the fur on my head. I don't know. I really don't. I notice Kudzu standing to the side, clearly trying not to look at us. Any internet? Kudzu looks up and shakes his head. No, I can't find a network. Damn it! D did that bear do anything to you? The hesitation in Leo's voice makes it clear what he's really asking, and it sounds like he's been wanting to ask it for a while. N no, he just tied me up for a while. I guess technically he did do more, in a way. But I don't want to go into that right now. That whole incident actually seems like a long time ago already. Nope. Oh. Alright, ladies and gents, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another fucked up episode of Echo. Oh, thank you guys so much for the support. We're about halfway. We are about I say halfway. We're about, I'd say, 50 subs away from uh, me becoming a certified content creator on YouTube. I am very excited. It's going to be awesome. I just know it is. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And now, nah, ring the little notification bell. Yes. But anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. I love you all. Bye-bye.